as I pray the powers of darkness tying lives and families will give way listen I tell you there will be a move of blood and fire the Lord showed me why blood to open up the gates that has been closed why fire to burn everything that has not been planted are you hearing me lift your hands mighty Jesus father there are families that are here tonight as a matter of life and death Lord your people are not gathered at unto a man they have come for a visitation yokes of sicknesses are killing families there are many people who have been tied down and Lord we understand that the enemy has done this but tonight we come in by the blood of Jesus and Lord as I make decrees inside and outside unto the spirit that confirmed the words of your servants I pray that there be an exodus from captivity at the count of seven hear me I like you to shout the name the name of Jesus at the top of your voice many of you will fall into visions and trances at once you will see liberations happening in your family ushers get ready let me help those under the anointing outside please shout one two three four five six get ready now seven I plead the blood I plead the blood I plead the blood bring them out I plead the blood yokes be broken I plead the blood let the blood speak let the blood speak shekekeka shekeka marekoto let the blood speak the blood opens every gate every gate paka pa pa ra da ba ra da ra da sekete tete tete eke rekete ba masoto seka ra pa ka tele kete ba mam pre po shote ni ba 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 ya 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 Lift your hands again. At the count of three, listen. I want you to shout I am free at the count of three the moment you do that there will be a release of fire fire get ready at the count of three one two three shake up arada ma poto so so ba rekete te kababa o salaba da katalaba kata rekete te ba the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Shake it, 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 it. I command powers. Let God's people go. I command yokes. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Chains. Chains. Be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah.
Alleluia. Hallelujah. Look at this lady. See how many people are trying to hold her. Look at how many people are trying to hold one person. how many people are trying to hold one person come out now out in the name of Jesus out now you are going by the fire of the Holy Ghost leave her now now out come out let her be. Just leave her. Leave her on the floor. Out. Come out now. Be free from yokes. Be free. You and your loved ones. Let her go, devil of darkness. Leave her now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Your time is up. Come out. Come out right now. Release this family. Release them now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Your time is up. The blood speaks. In the name of Jesus. of him now come out come out of him by the fire of the Holy Ghost release him and all that belong to him the blood speaks now I open up this gate now be free in the name of Jesus are the powers the horns that frustrates the agenda of the kingdom see you must not come out here as it's happening to them realize it's happening to you hallelujah now anyone with any kind of growth or anything in your body or you're standing in for someone lift up your hands whether a lump a growth Please lift your hands because it's time for it to go. Turn her. Look at me. Just look at me. Look at me. 
the name of Jesus look at me right now this is a this is a mighty I'm seeing seven horns on this lady's head seven horns and it's not just her seven horns this is a territorial spirit that has sat on our family but by the blood of Jesus Christ I adjure you by the blood of Jesus I see a big gate closed I open it now in the spirit many of you may not understand what is happening I open it I see a gate that is closed over that family I open it now all the chains on it let fire fall on them one of the horn terminal disease the other one delay the other one joblessness the other one lack of marriage I set it on fire as I see it in the spirit now now as it's happening to her it happens to you in the name of Jesus I mean those just those with any growth please lift your hands now I'll start ministering to the sick right now we'll just start with them and we're going to take testimonies hallelujah before pastor Jake comes up to minister I'm going to pray for you sick people lift your hands if you are tired of that growth just growth of all sorts you are tired if you are not tired you can put down your hand whether it's a lump, whether it's whatever it is. Hallelujah. Now, as I pray for you, the Lord is showing me two people. The power of God will come upon them. There are movements on your body. Movements. 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 And the Lord is showing me a mighty being something that looks like an alligator this is what i'm seeing the lord is just showing it to me two of you by the power of the holy ghost wherever these two are lord let your fire right now fall on those two the power of god will come mightily upon those two people whether you are inside or outside right now the power of god will come and the fire will fall mightily. Please, when that happens, let's have the two people out. It's falling right now. It's falling right now. Movements in your body. Movements in your body. Movements in your body. There's one more person left. So That demonic movement. The fire of God locates you wherever you are right now. In the name of Jesus. Bring her. Come out. Come out of her now. Out. That devil of darkness. This is a big I'm seeing like a beast. It moves all around this woman's body. It's already forming pores, literal pores around her breast region. A devil of darkness. Because this is supposed to cause stroke, partial paralysis. It will eat up everything. They will cut one breast and then all through the body. But right now, your time is up. Please take note the second person. The power of God is still going to fall on you. The Lord showed me two people. Right now in the name of Jesus, I release you. 
I release you. I release you. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. This is a projection of darkness. The Lord shows me. Father, by your mercy, let the blood speak. In the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free. Let the swelling go down. Let the pain dry up. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Outside, lift your hands. The one person is outside, just those outside. Outside, lift your hands. I'd like you to shout the name Jesus. The power of God will come upon that person. At the count of three. One, two, three. That fire of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus. While they are getting the person, those with lungs, growths, lift your hands now. Thank you, Jesus. Sila makalabos. As I pray for you, start checking yourself. We'll take some instant testimonies. Already the Lord has showed me one lady. A lump on the left side of your breast. It just disappeared right now. Just disappeared right now. Lift your hands. Right now I command every lump, every growth. Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. I command you to shrink every growth in any part of your body right now. I command you to shrink in the name of Jesus. I command you to shrink in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now begin to check yourself. Who is Musa? Musa. Musa. Please quickly, if I, if I call your case, hurry up, don't waste time. We're still expecting the person outside. The power of God will come upon the person. Just when that happens, let the person come. Musa, I'm hearing the name Musa. Who has the name Musa? Hallelujah. Please, when I mention your case or anything. You are Musa? What are you waiting for? stand up there is witchcraft in your family and the Lord is going to use you as a mighty deliverer hallelujah Janet 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 The meaning of your name in your language means thank you. The meaning of your name means thank you. Thank you. You're a guy. Thank you. He's a brother. Tall brother. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, listen. There is a lady, this is a very interesting case I want to call. The Lord is ministering to me. Listen, listen. Not only do you see snakes in your dreams, you see them physically around you. This has happened in a long time. Who is that person? Please. You see snakes physically. Physically. This happens physically. It's your time of deliverance now. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Please. The person is around. The person is here. Come out quickly. Please. Save our time. We have a lot to do. Who is that person? You are the one. Physically. Come. Come on. There's another person. You. Come. Come. Two of them. Come now. Hurry up. Look at me. You see physical? Yes. Since when? No. Mike. Huh? That was last year and we didn't really see it soon. Where do you see the snakes? In my dream. Sometimes maybe when I go out I see them see them physically what of you are you married do you know why 
this is what we must destroy this night. You, your deliverance will start now. Praise God. Ah. Out. Come out of hand now. Out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, the snake you are seeing is a man that turns to a snake for you. Right now, I, I, I just saw him in the spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Leave her now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out. Come out now. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Out. Tonight is your night of liberty. This lady, see you. Because I am seeing and while I stood, the Lord was ministering to me. And the Lord was telling me that they have made a projection that this lady will never marry. Any man that comes around this lady, this is what destroys it. This lady you are seeing. Nobody likes her for whatever reason, nobody can know right now. Leave her in the name of Jesus. Come out now. The snake you are seeing. Leave her right now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You brought the picture two pictures listen listen wait let me describe it before you come out you brought two pictures two pictures of your family members two different pictures you came and stood who is the person two pictures i mean one one two pictures you are here with two pictures of your family members who is that person the lord is ministering to me because there is i need to pray on one of them you brought two pictures of your family members Please, when we have that person come up, what are these people here for? Oh, I called you. Snake. I, I left her because we are going to deal with this. Janet, where's Janet? Who's Janet? Three of you are Janet. You are from Kogi State. Who is from Kogi? There is somebody from Kogi, Janet. Kogi State. Is it Kogi? I think Kogi is somebody. Please, the Lord is ministering to me. Let's save time because I don't want you to tie down somebody's. I want God to grant us grace to minister. Your name is Janet. Your mom's name is Janet. You are from Kogi State. Come. Because I see they want to kill your mother. Lift your hands. That Your mom's name is Janet. I will pray for you so that she will be free. Where, what's wrong with her? We need to pray for her. Huh? Because I'm first seeing sickness. And then I'm seeing a ghastly motor accident. We must pray for her. The power of God will come upon you and it will touch her. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, by your mercy, right now, let your power set him free. My brother, I break the curse of witchcraft in your family. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Okay, hold my hands. Let me pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My dear, let me pray for you. This thing called bad luck must live your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ, be free. Totally free. I'm interested in your case. Let me pray for the rest. Which of your family members is here? If you are in her family, come and stand here. God is going to visit the whole family now. Our family, if you are not part of our family, don't come here, please. If you are part of our family, just come and stand here quickly. Please, let's save time. Sister, look at me. 
salvation has come to your life today this your crying is over are you hearing me because this i must pray this lady's family she has suffered you will just see a lady standing like this that god will pick a lady out because this is i'm seeing hardship yes sir where are you from from Berry. what's your father doing now nothing what's your mother doing nothing look at this how did i know do i know her because this is a cause of hardship there's nothing that they do that will prosper but tonight in the name that is above all names salvation comes your family realize that as it's happening for one person it's happening to you too in the name of the lord jesus hold my hands do you know what i want you to do shout hold my hands shout jesus at the top of your voice can you do that jesus! family come power in the name of Jesus. We are going to pray. Two things the Lord wants me to pray. Number one, your mother will not be a widow. Are you hearing me? We are going to pray. We are going to break that power. Number two, there is a cause of delay in this family that will be lifted now. Is that true? Am I making sense? There is a cause of delay. Hold your hands together. Oh, you are an usher. When I pray for you, go and continue with your work. Praise God. There is a cause of delay. Father, in the name of Jesus, you ask me to call this family out. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I release them from this devilish shackle of delay. There is a power of God upon my hands. I'm going to lay it upon you. As it comes upon you, it will terminate this delay. Shekata palata kata palakata balada bos. Randa brecha kata balaku soprondo sopreha. Delay begun. You especially. Delay. I cause delay. Delay in school. Delay in everything. I cause it in the name of Jesus. And forgetfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. You. Where are you from? Kaduna. You are from Kaduna. I need to pray for you. Hmm? You are not feeling very fine. Hold my hands. This is a devilish thing. Thank you, Jesus. Release her right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Stephanie, 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 Stephanie. Do we have anybody like that? Stephanie. That's the person. Bring the person in. I mean, that was the other one person. Remember our two people. Break every chain. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for miracle jobs this night before the end of the program. Hallelujah. Enough is enough. Praise God. We are going to pray for jobs. Two ladies, you and you, two of you talking, come out. Come. Yes, God would locate you. What makes you think God will forget about you? Run and come. Come and take your breakthrough. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come and join them before you do your work. See, let me tell you something. While she stood here, she was praying and saying that the Lord will locate her. Is that, is that what you were saying? because i saw like a flash of light and i saw it written and this was what she was thinking and the lord said let her join and pray first hallelujah father in the name of jesus visit her family
visit her family in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hold your hands together, two friends. Yoko came and we are just talking, looking through the window and doing a lot of things. God is going to visit you. Where is your mother? Go and tell her huh, that by next month, a big miracle is coming for her. Hmm? You know, when God tells me words like this, I'm very careful before you go and write an article on me. Now people can write all kinds of articles. Prediction incorrect. Three exclamation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hold my hands. Let me pray for two. Hold. God is going to visit you. Look at me. You will be great ladies. I want to pray for you. The hand of God will come mightily upon you. Thank you, Father. Use them for your glory right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let their families be mighty. Let their lives be mighty. I separate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lay your hands on him. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Let him experience your power and your grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are sick in your body. You came here specifically for a miracle, for sickness. Let me see your hands. Please, let me see your hands quickly so that we'll know. Okay. Please come out and line up quickly. Let's minister to the sick now. Baba, come. I will start with you. Please celebrate our daddy. Thank you for coming. If you are outside, please come quickly. Just line up quickly. No. Welfare. Please, please, don't come out wondering, will God heal me? Will God touch me? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Pastor Williams, Pastor Jakes, can we quickly minister to them? Please, as hands come, worship him. Just lead us. Powerful songs of worship. Hallelujah. As we pray for them, those of you who are seated, just keep praying in tongues. We'll pray for them quickly and then we'll minister. I want God to touch everybody this night. Hallelujah. I want God to touch everybody. I pray that God will give us time. Hallelujah. If there is time, by the grace of God, we'll lay hands on everybody. Everybody. Hallelujah. We're just praying that we'll be able to do this quickly. Hallelujah. Worship team. Savior, He can move the mountains. Thank you, Father. Let your power move as we pray for your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, go ahead. As we pray for you, please go back to your seat. Pastor Jason. Okay. As we pray for you, just, you don't need to tell us what is wrong with you. As we pray for you, just trust the power of God to touch you. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God, my God is mighty to save. He's mighty, he is mighty to save. Altar of salvation, and altar of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. 
blood sister. This thing has made me angry. This is my blood sister. Blood of my blood, bone of my bones. That devil is a bastard this night. This is my own blood sister. Same father, same mother. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let my sister, this is my mother's baby. Bone of her bone, flesh of her flesh. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of sickness. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out of her. Forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No sickness die for gold. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If I do not fall sick, my sister will not fall sick. In the name of Jesus Christ. Perfection. Everything wrong with you be healed now. Hallelujah. Sorry I took it personal. The thing pained me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. He Hallelujah. Please, if you are holding a picture, just lift it up and we'll pray on it. Lift it up and we'll pray on it. Praise God. If you are holding someone's picture, just lift it up. We'll have the time when we'll pray on pictures. It's Hallelujah. It's it's As you go back, make sure you check yourself. Miracles are happening. It's raining. What's wrong with you? It's raining. It's raining. <laughs> Spirit, now the heart beat of heaven. Let us hear, let it roll, let it roll. Open the Lord, let it roll, let it roll.
Now listen. I want to specifically, you can come and stand. It doesn't mean you have it. We want to cancel HIV now. There's nothing to feel. Hallelujah. Whether for yourself or for your loved one, doesn't mean you have HIV. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please don't be impulsive. HIV is a killer disease. You may have it. Come out. It's better to come out than to die. That devil is a liar. Bring her up here. Bring her up. Just leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Just leave her. Leave her, leave her. Just leave her. HIV. How many of you know HIV is a killer disease? How many of you know that HIV is from the pit of hell? Hallelujah. And how many of you know that HIV is reversible? This is what we are going to do right now. Worship team, powerfully, that song, miracles everywhere. Hallelujah. As we pray for HIV, please believe it. Believe it for yourself and for any other person that you are standing for. As you are praying right now, some of you, when we pray for you, you need to call them and tell them this is it.
Give Jesus a shout of praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you bring your prayer request? Do you have your prayer request? Please bring them out and pass it. Hallelujah. Ushers, coordinate them quickly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to know mighty miracles are happening in this place. Mighty, mighty miracles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mighty miracles are happening. Now, this is what will happen. Pastor Jakes will come up, just, just um, minister for a few minutes. While he's doing that, I'll just take a few minutes break. When I come up, we're going to pray on the request. But we are going to take a few testimonies right now. Hallelujah. Now, please check yourself inside and outside. If you see that there is a notable healing, notable miracle, especially for those of you who were delivered. Hallelujah. Notable something left you, a chain broke. God, open your eyes to see something. How do we do it now? Uh, just go to the back. Go to the back. Hallelujah. When Pastor Jakes is done, he will meet you there. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, pass your prayer request quickly. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen to me. While Apostle was ministering to those, the women with the burying cases. Now listen to me. One of you, three of you, this is what I saw, kind of babies you were carrying. Hallelujah. I saw the clothes the babies were wrapped in. They call it, is it turquoise blue? Is it turquoise blue? One was white, then the other was pink. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We did not discuss this before I came. Earlier on, while speaking to you, and I told you a woman will come giving a testimony of a baby. Are you following? Please. Pay attention to what the Lord is doing tonight. Hallelujah. First, because God will confirm his word and God will confirm the prophetic declarations of his servants. Hallelujah. I'll pray for some people right now. Please lift up your hands. The Lord communicated to me the intention of Satan is to take away somebody's life during NYSE. Are you following? Just three days into NYSE. Hallelujah. And I began to weep. And I'll pray right now and the Lord will roll that thing away. Are you following what I'm saying? Please listen to me. I do not know who you are, but the Lord will locate you. Are you following? Whether it's your family member or whatever, that the hand of God will locate you. The devil is a bastard. Are you following what I'm saying? Satan is a bastard. How can somebody, God, the parents will change you to a point where you are supposed to bring blessing and suddenly the plan of Satan is to take away that life. Because people have projected from the village. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Father, we thank you. Please lift up your hands. Thank you, blessed Lord. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, blessed Lord. Mang Rikoto Panibong Rafiketa Lebraso Pratelia Leon Jimbembrong Rate Kapota Virata Labara Baba Baba. The fire of God will locate you. The fire of God will locate you. The fire of God will locate you. That intention from the pit of hell, the fire of God will locate you. The fire of God will locate you right now. In the name of Jesus, let the angels of God, <laughs> aha, let the angels of God locate you. Ushers, please take note. Mark Repong, Shiketa Viron, Vendel, Yadaba Bandaya, Riano Robopopo, Yadaba Bosana, Riata Pong, Rakte Ketelia, Bakitong, Shiketa Viratose, 
I rebuke that hand of death. We roll away that spirit of death. That projection from the kingdom of darkness. That projection from the kingdom of darkness. Please still lift up your hands. The Lord will break chains. The Bible says, whatsoever he does, prospereth. The, works, the Lord is to bless the works of our hands. Chains tying people's hands down. The sword of the spirit will break through. And the Lord will release financial blessings. Please listen to me. Because some of you from now, please pay attention to what I'm saying. Checks will be written. Are you following? Financial blessings will come. I'm telling you, I know what I'm saying. Financial blessings will come to you. There are people that your family have been suffering. They've been trying. Your father has been working. But his, their hands are chained. Their hands are chained. And the fire of God will go through. Some of you will literally feel the fire of God in your hands. There are chains around your hands that will be broken right now. Thank you, blessed Lord. Please just lift up your hands. Let the sword of God's spirit go. Let chains be broken right now. Let chains be broken. Even outside. Let chains be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Let the chains be broken right this moment. Let chains be broken in the name of Jesus. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains, chains. Chains holding your businesses down. Your father's prosperity, your family's prosperity, the works of your hands. Let the blessings of God come upon it right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Lord. Thank you, blessed Lord. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Please, those of you with chest conditions, the Lord wants to touch you now. Are you following? Those of you with chest conditions, thank you, Lord. Please just lay your hands on your chest chest conditions around your heart your lungs please just lay your hands i sense the lord touching you there right now just lay your hands on your chest blessed lord touch them right now in the name of jesus some of you will feel a warmth a warmth around your chest region the lord will be touching you right now thank you blessed lord thank you blessed lord let healing come to you right now you feel a release. You sense a release right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that chest condition. Let it go. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Let it go right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That devil holding your chest. I command a release right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Lord. Thank you, bless the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Just before I hand the mic over, the Lord communicates to me about these people. The Lord wants to grant you wings of ego. I hear what I'm saying? Wings of ego. It's for some people. It's not everybody I'm talking to. Wings of, of, of egos. The Bible says they will mount up with wings as ego. To come as grace. In the spirit, wings of ego. You are so high. You are so high in the spirit. <laughs> Please lift up your hand. I'm telling you the Lord will 
Can't you wings of eagle? Thank you, blessed Lord. Holy Spirit, let the breath of God rest upon them in the name of Jesus. Let the breath of God rest upon them. Let the breath of God rest upon them in the name of Jesus. Let the breath of God right now as I speak in the name of Jesus for those people blessed one ha blessed one for those people my God let the hand of God come upon you Rando Koshi Pratila let the hand of God come upon you the hand of God comes upon you the hand of God comes upon you the hand of God comes upon you Oshas, help me find those people. The hand of God comes upon you. Just bring them to the right here. The hand of God comes upon you. The hand of God, of God comes upon you. The hand of God comes upon you. The hand of God comes upon you. Wings to mount up. Wings to mount up. Wings to mount up. Just bring them to the right here. Bring them to the right. Wings to mount up. Wings as eagles to mount up. Wings. Wings. Wings in the spirit. Wings in the spirit. Rando Koshi Kapira Bagose. Libro si pretelia. Libro si lo superila. I will. Libro so pararabaka baha shakarababa baba baba. There's a guy and a lady outside the Lord will touch you now. There's a guy and a lady outside the Lord will touch you right now. Rate photo parikabo, liberosi, ilarabaha stupirati landa, bakiato, shikre, subra, nende, man, shakila, bon, jale. I dare you will not recover. Are you hearing? You will not recover because you begin to have experiences, dangerous experiences. Bariro si pretile brendo pratica dobra nira, nira zingo si pretila ha. Help me find that guy and that lady outside I spoke about. Liro su pretila, dando roshike dobra nira kata, biraranando sing radiata. of days oh, 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 oh. You are the ancient of oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah Hallelujah We're Out of time We're going to pray Praise the Lord I was looking at my cute baby. This lady was participating powerfully. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now we are going to pray. I hope we have all the requests. Who has not written, please, one minute quickly. Just write quickly and come and drop it. God answers prayers in this place. Mighty prayers. There's still a lot to do. God is blessing people. There are impartations going on. Don't wait until you come out. Hallelujah. All right, everybody stand. This is a very prophetic moment. Please stand. Online, I hope we are connecting. Prayer, all the prayer requests that have been submitted online. is left we want to pray on the request right now hallelujah 
Every request in this place is turned to testimonies. Hallelujah. Please, those, even as we pray, there will be impartations. So those who are here, as much as possible, um, just relax so that you don't get up and then you collapse on the way. Hallelujah. Do we have any more prayer requests? Okay, let's give one more minute quickly. I see people rushing with their request. Please, for all our miracle services, we pray on request. This was an instruction that God gave us. We cannot meet every need. Those who are online, connect with us. Mighty testimonies have come up. Hallelujah. We've had barren women have triplets. We've had genotypes changed. We've had all kinds of unbelievable testimonies. Let's see how this episode will be right now. Praise God. Pastor, Pastor Williams. Please celebrate him as he comes. Pastor, James, we are going to pray. Pastor Williams is going to lead us through this prophetic session. All I need you to do is stretch your hands and say amen when it's time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let the spirit over 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 this request to hope by our satalaba. We can't teach the brand in Calabar no shit. We push it and we do shit. Let them be miracles. Let them be breakthroughs. Let them be breakthroughs. Let the impossible become possible. We can't pass the shit. Miracle jobs in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let doors open. Let doors open. By the blood of Jesus. Let doors open. By the blood of Jesus. Let doors open. By the blood of Jesus, let there be possibility. Let the impossible become possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of our Lord Jesus, in the name of our Lord Jesus, let the burning woman conceive and rejoice. In the name of our Lord Jesus, let there be creativity. In the name of our Lord Jesus, like a papa shit alaba. By the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the finger of the Most High, by your power, oh God, by the greatness of that power, let the enemy submit by the blood of Jesus, let submit by the blood of Jesus, let submit by the love of Jesus, let doors open for your people, let doors open, even those online, let doors open in the name of Jesus, let there be miracles, miracles. Miracles, testimonies, miracles, testimonies, miracles, let it happen now, miracles, let there be testimonies, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let that which is impossible with men become possible now, 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost, thank you very God. Blessed be the name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father. Every request here we declare in the name of Jesus, it is turned into testimonies now. It is turned into testimonies now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I see miracles everywhere right now before we enter the prophetic session. Oh, 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 oh. Miracles everywhere Miracles everywhere Miracles everywhere Right now Right now Miracles Miracles everywhere I see miracles Miracles everywhere We need miracles Miracles everywhere Right now Right now Right now 
Hallelujah. The Lord is going to do mighty things right now in this place. It's another dimension of the mighty things that you'll be doing. Hallelujah. Please, brothers and sisters, listen. God will not bring you to this place to waste your time. I told you all you need to do is to believe. All you need to do is to believe. Hallelujah. We are going to begin to decree and the power of God will move in another dimension in this place. Please, I like you to believe. I want you to shout amen. I want you to believe. It's time for breakthrough. It's time for the limitations that tie people maritally, job-wise. It's time for it to bow. It's time for yokes to be destroyed. And we'll also pray that there will be impartation. Some of you came to take fresh grace. Some of you have exhausted certain spiritual levels. Some doors have just refused to open. You have fasted, you have prayed. We have come tonight by the grace of God to supply grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you something. Prophetic words are very, very powerful. Hallelujah. It's not about speaking. It's about creating. Hallelujah. The prophetic word of God does not just reveal your problem. You already know what the problem is. But creating solution. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Oh, that you will believe, brothers and sisters. That you will believe. That you will believe. Last miracle service. A lady had two pressing requests. One of it was to get a life partner. For her, it was becoming a serious issue. The second was to get a job. I sent the leaders the text. The very next day, after Friday like this, the next day, somebody that has been playing around, has not been serious today, he's here, tomorrow is there, the very next day, this brother just came and said, look, I'm ready to be serious. We're going to get married. And that, listen, listen, don't clap yet. The, that same Saturday, she got a text that on the next Wednesday she should come for an interview. That one is not just a miracle. That's what we call breakthrough. Hallelujah. Pastor Jakes began to speak about finances. We are going to pray for that and for other issues. Are you ready to receive for your loved ones? Lift up your hands. It does wonders in our midst. I started seeing this since Tuesday. I saw a big padlock, bigger than this building. And it was closed. And I don't assume explanations when the Lord has not told me what it is. Hallelujah. Even till I came here, God did not tell me anything about it. And when I sat down, while past, I mean, while I was standing there, Pastor Jakes was ministering, and the Holy Spirit told me to open the doors of prison to them that are bound. To open the doors of prison to them that are bound. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now, in the name of Jesus, every tight down marital destiny, every lady that is due for marriage. Every brother that is due for marriage and nothing is happening this night, I command that door be open. 
be open now. Doors of marriage be open now. I call forth your life partner into your life in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it now. Every marital chain over your life, I open it and I break that chain now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For all those trusting God for job, you have applied and applied, you have done everything you know to do right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare those of jobs scattered around this nation and beyond. I compel you in the name that is above all names. Open now. Open now. Open now. Federal government jobs, oil company jobs, bank jobs, in the name of Jesus. I release it to your life. I release it to your life. Where you do not have help us, may my God step in for you. May God step in for you. May God step in for you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every family here that has begun a building project and has not been able to complete it for whatever reason, right now, I compel that project to be completed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every power that holds that project I challenge you in the name that is above all names. Let God's people finish what they have started in the name of Jesus. Every academic issue in this place. Whether admission issue, whether graduation issue, whether whatever issue, service issue, in the name that is above all names, I pray right now for every academic darkness, let there be light now, 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 now. For those that the devil has tied down and has said you will not finish, whether it's your undergraduate, whether your master's, whether your PhD, whatever, I command the doors of, of graduation to be open for you now. Whatever course needs to be waived, we waive it now. We waive it now. We waive it now. Whoever has found that you will not graduate this night, we compel them to let you go. And for those who have been trusting God for service, you are finished. The name will come out, your name will not be there. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray right now. May God move in a way no man can explain. And may you be mobilized in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for every family that has, has tried to move forward. There are families that are tied down, not as individuals, as a family. It will keep working for others, but when it gets to your turn, it stops. Tonight, in the name that is above all names, whatever has not been working in your family, we move it now in the name of Jesus. 
whatever mountain we challenge it. Rekata, sosote, aparekata, masote, bariata. I challenge it. I challenge it. I challenge that mountain in the name of Jesus. Say kabalata kabalata shi. Not top proto show baladaba. Hallelujah. Every spirit that is responsible for fight and quarrels in the house. Some of you, your parents are under yokes you cannot understand. It's not their fault, but tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every power upon your family members that will not bring peace at home, I cause it to its root in the name of Jesus. I cause it to its root in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty things are happening in this place. Hallelujah. I want to pray and break the curse of poverty. There are some families, it doesn't matter how much they give you. Something will eat it up. You buy a car to have accident. You build a house, rain will wash it. Right now I pray that any covenant of poverty that was entered in Rakata Bosota Repo Shotala on behalf of your family, I set it on fire now. I set it on fire now. Now, 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 now. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm still going to pray that the power of God is going to move upon some people in a mighty way. Because this poverty in families must be broken. People have gotten into prostitution because of it. There are people who think you are lazy. They do not know that there are forces behind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Lift your hands. I will first pray for you, 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 before your family. Forget about your family for one minute and pray for yourself. If you don't need it, just put down your hands. But if you are tired at where you are and you are saying, Lord, I'm not too young to be blessed, lift your hands. When I count three, shout the name of Jesus, the power of God. Man, it will fall like fire. That cause, my God, I pray that that yoke of poverty will be lifted. Are you ready now? One, two, three. We cause it. We cause it. We cause it. We cause it. Poverty dies now, now, now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray a very dangerous prayer for you right now. Remember the teaching I did on activating breakthroughs. The ministry of destiny help us hear me there are many of you where you are now you have the gift you have the skill you just need those who need what you have you have it you just need somebody hear me the bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon hallelujah many of you after this meeting i tell you on that god they will send for you. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Whoever across this globe called earth has been destined to locate you and honor the grace upon your life, wherever they are, except God is not God in this place. I pray tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost, I call them into your life. Receive their ministry. Receive their ministry. Receive their ministry. The 
destiny help us wherever you are in the name of the Lord Jesus wherever you are from this night through phone calls emails supernatural coincidences connect to them connect to them connect to them hallelujah hallelujah I want to pray against the plague of death 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 lift your hands for you and your loved ones hear me the Bible says with long life it didn't say will I give you it said will I satisfy you you are supposed to be satisfied with it hallelujah and no devil should cut short your life I want to pray for you now every plague of death over any life here or over any family by the power of the blood be lifted now in the name of Jesus 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 Hallelujah. Listen. Do you know why the psalmist prayed a very powerful prayer? He said, You are my glory and the lifter up of my head. That means something lifted it down. So that those that will see it and bless it cannot see it. I pray for you. Whatever has put your head down, so that nobody will bless you this night. According to the prayer of the psalmist, lay your hands on your head. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray whatever has put you down, I prophesy, arise, 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 shake it, shake it, my proto kotosa, arise, hallelujah. Keep your hands up, please. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says, It shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. He said, Whatsoever he does, prospers. Lift those hands. Every curse that the devil wants to put upon your hands, there are some of you, Anything that touches your hand fails. No matter what it is from tonight, that yoke comes to an end in the name of Jesus. That yoke comes to an end in the name of Jesus. That yoke comes to an end in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray against habits. Look at me. There are people dying of all kinds of habits from all kinds of lust to all kinds of things are you getting what i'm saying this is what gives satan access into the lives of many people doesn't matter how they pray for you doesn't matter how they they deliver you you will find yourself paul said that the things that i want to do I do not find myself doing them he said and the things that i don't want to do that's what i find myself doing it he said with my spirit i serve the lord but in my body i see another law working in my members and he said oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from this body of death i want to pray for you take this prayer very seriously because many of us, after all the prayers and the deliverances, we keep opening doors. I want to pray for you. It takes grace. It's not about struggle. Listen. Say, look at me. If you want to use willpower to say, I want to force myself not to sleep with this sister, you are joking. Except you are not a man that God created. Many people have tried to use force this is where grace comes in 
You see, grace is a powerful ability of the spirit. It makes you extraordinary. That's why some people don't believe that there are people who can walk in holiness. They say it's impossible. Did you know that wicked spirits are behind these promptings? You see a matured man who go and carry a little girl like this one, this baby. Huh? A baby that he can give birth to how many times? And then still want to molest. Them. It's not normal, brothers and sisters. Or pornography. Once you see free internet, your body is shaking. No, it's not normal. Either the victory of Jesus Christ is a lie or there is something wrong. We want to settle that issue tonight. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, every fleshly desire that although you love God, you are seeing another love, whatever power that sponsors this operation of lust and immorality, I curse you to your root in the name of Jesus. I curse you to your root in the name of Jesus. I cross you to your roots in the name of Jesus. I release you from every kind of habit you have been praying about. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and men. There are many of us, there is nothing like favor in your life. When you hear people talk about favor, you just keep clapping for them. But the sincere truth is that you don't have that testimony. Somebody can come and meet you. Come. Somebody can meet you and say, take me to Sister A's house. You will escort them. They will go and bring Sister A and leave you. It's not so. Favor is the sign that the presence of God is with you. And if you truly have the presence of God, something, a signature, somebody should just like you and bless you. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. If you have not been shouting amen, this is a place to shout and amen and receive. I pray let the oil of favor may it mantle your life now in the name of Jesus 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 favor 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 I'm going to pray that prayer one more time many of you do not know that one day of favor can end some wicked struggles in your life are you hearing what I'm saying favor Somebody called a man of God and told him, he says, sir, for the rest of your life, I want to be giving you allowance for food forever. What kind of, what kind of thing is that? And this is somebody that is blessed. Hallelujah. A lady walked up to me some months ago and said, every month I will be bringing cake for you. Every month she brings cake for me. Every month. There are people that send me recharge card every month as as a covenant between them and god there are people that say every month i'm showing it no matter what it is see god can bring somebody who will like you no strings attached they are just compelled by god to bless you may those kind of people find you after this night may those kind of people find you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me share with you a true story. And it's the story of somebody I know. This guy was trusting God for a breakthrough in his life. Things had gone so bad. 
are you getting what i'm saying and he just went to abuja when he went to abuja he just met his friends hear me the friends told him just follow me and he followed them sheepishly only to go and find out that they were they were trying to negotiate a land how much was the land 720 million naira and the agents will get 10 percent 72 million and they, with him they became four he thought he was dreaming when they gave them they said you you followed us you have something this guy became a millionaire overnight see i don't believe in laziness but there is so much your hard work can do lift your hands one more time i pray for you where you have struggled where you are running may the favor of god pick you in the name of jesus may the favor of god pick you hallelujah 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 I want to pray one more prayer. The Lord is good unto them that do what? Not wait on Him. Wait for Him. Wait for Him. It's a very difficult thing wait very very difficult and this divinely orchestrated period of waiting is called process write it in the kingdom it's called process process so there is a difference between waiting as a process to your destiny and waiting as delay from the kingdom of darkness to destroy you and you must sustain the ability to discern so that you know whether to align and receive grace and might from God or to stand and take authority over the activities of darkness. Hallelujah. Process. Very important. You will come to this period of your life. Whether you pray for it or not, it's part of the things that you will find. And I'll be showing you from scripture how that many people messed up when they got to this season. Let me give you one example. Remember the nation of Israel. Hallelujah. They came out. There was a prophecy given to Moses. Even Moses, their leader, did not enter the promised land. Look up. Did you know that God never told Moses he was going to die on the way? Is that true? The prophecy that was given to Moses was that he was going to lead the people from the land of bondage into the land flowing with milk and honey. God never told him somebody will take out the baton. But between Egypt, brothers and sisters, and Canaan, only two people from that generation were able to make it. Only two people. They all had the prophecy. They rejoiced. They joined Moses after the, the, the parting of the Red Sea to sing. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider, because it had not stretched their patience too much, but they came to a point. Look at all the things they did in the wilderness, because they did not understand this operation. And listen, if you do not learn the lesson, you will do the same thing. It's easy to talk about them. A few thoughts about waiting that I want you to note. Number one, in the kingdom, please make sure you note that we are talking with respect to the kingdom. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. For many of us, our concept of waiting is to stand still, known to be motionless. But that's not the way it works in the kingdom. When you enter the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, 
it does not mean absence of progress. It also does not mean absence of advancement. That when you are in the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it's not the same thing as saying you are in one spot, not making progress. To you, you think you are in one spot because there is no physical evidence to measure your advancement. But I'm telling you right now that behind the scene, there is a lot of advancement taking place. Number two, waiting in the kingdom is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. I'm taking out time to read it because I don't want us to miss it. You'll notice in the last few weeks I've been teaching very carefully, reading almost directly from my notebook here because I don't want us to confuse and miss words and then for our online people, I want them to follow on thoroughly. Waiting is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. Number three. Look up. I want to explain something now about waiting. One of the biggest things I've seen in the lives of people, and please listen, God is about to minister directly to us now, is that because we have expectations for something great about our life, we postpone all of our joy and gladness and shift it. Are you getting my point? To the future so that we will take advantage of that joy when we arrive. And then we starve ourselves of joy during the waiting period. Are you getting my point? But the Bible tells us that the vehicle that carries strength in the kingdom is joy. I want to show you why a lot of people never arrive. During the waiting process, one of the things that we are vulnerable to face is the absence or the diminishing of joy. I'll give you an example. A brother wants to get married. Or a lady wants to get married. God has told you you will get married. Is that true? And you pass all the joy. And say on that glorious day. When I wear my suit. You will see the dance I've never danced before. I will dance David's dance and laugh. But between now and that point. You will see the lady looking frowny. Angry at everybody. Why? Why is God delaying me? And so we kill our joy. Are you getting what I'm saying? And we wait and we pack up everything and we keep pushing the joy to the future. And we never get blessed with the moment. That expectation kills our joy. We cry day and night. Oh God, when will I become a millionaire? I'm seeing it. Let me just enter this thing. And you see joyless believers. Angry and offended at God. Note this tonight. That waiting should never postpone your joy. You can be joyful while waiting. Never wait until you arrive. Your joy gets complete when you arrive. But that joy should start and go with you all the way. Because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is the strength that you will need. There is a difference between joy and happiness. If I give you one million now, there is every reason to be happy. That's not joy. Hallelujah. But joy is of the Holy Ghost. It's the strength and the sense of rest and merriment that comes based on the conviction of God's integrity. So when there is no physical evidence, you are joyful. He said rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. Look up please. How many of us have killed our joy? There are so many people. You see a lady of 20 years. Looking like 50. Why? Say I'm not in a relationship. God spoke to me. Am I the worst person in the world? No joy. You stand outside. 
tomorrow morning and watch all the people that move. 90% of people are joyless people. They get up in the morning, there's no sense of joy and merriment. You ask them why. And they give you all kinds of legitimate reason. And they believe that they are justified on the strength of those reasons not to be joyful. And they never arrive at their destinations. Is God speaking to someone tonight? That's what changed our parents. Many of them, when they got married like us, they were happy people. Eventually, their expectations. They expected that when the first child is five years, they would have been millionaires, established in their dream jobs, having their own homes. Unfortunately, they had wishes, but they did not understand the principles that will make it happen. So 15 years down the line, they are still crying for rent. There's nothing there. And you find your father old and angry. Now, don't insult him. It's the frustration, the pain and the bitterness that has been fast forwarded. Every new year, people are happy. Do you know why they are happy? Because it makes them forget about the previous year. And for the first one week, they dance. Many churches have all kinds of thanksgiving. By February, everybody is angry. Oh Lord, not again. Will this year pass without the child coming? Oh Lord, so this is how the husband will not come. This is how my admission will not come again. And then our joy. The devil keeps sucking out every ounce of joy. And by the middle of the year, everyone is already frustrated and gassed out spiritually. You must sustain a revelation and a technology in the spirit to make sure that part of the things that suffer of all the things that will suffer during this waiting period your joy should not be one of them are you getting what i'm saying because your joy will culminate to your strength god is speaking to someone tonight waiting in the kingdom is an acknowledgement of divine timing when you wait in the kingdom when you follow through that period you are acknowledging that god works with times and seasons and that you submit yourself to the process of how god makes men great you are everything everything is you you are everything everything is you joy waiting is an acknowledgement of divine timing everybody say divine timing say after me there is a season in my life and destiny when I will manifest say one more time there is a season and a timing there is a season of showing forth there is a season of manifestation there is a season of display yes you must recognize that there is a season brothers and sisters is called due season everyone say due season due season the second word I want us to consider tonight before I begin to build is the word impatience. Write it down. Impatience. What is impatience? Patience that has been exhausted. patience that has been exhausted tonight I speak like prophet Elijah that that cruise of oil that is left will not run dry there is a technology that will refill it tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ brothers and sisters impatience is deadly 
and is dangerous to your destiny write it down and underline it impatience is deadly i i think that's one of the greatest keys in my opinion one of the greatest keys that the devil has used to destroy africans nigerians and young people in general impatience impatience what does it mean to be impatient impatience means getting ahead of god getting ahead of god that's what it means to be impatient you run ahead of god you run ahead of his timing for your life impatience is a dangerous thing god is speaking to us tonight because many of us are where we are at this point of our lives because of impatience there are many of us that stress is almost killing us right now because of impatience hallelujah very very important you are a young lady you're just 21 you want to kill yourself if I don't marry by 2014, let it not be that I'm a Christian. And you are yoking yourself. You fasted for two weeks, which is supposed to be wonderful if it were for a just cause. But at 21, there's all kinds of pressure. And you can't wait. There's no, there's no patience. Impatience has driven many of us into all sorts of things. Everybody say, I receive grace to be patient. Abraham was a man in scripture who the tragedy of impatience caught up with him. Just write the scripture. We may not read it for time's sake. I want to hurry up and I want us to finish very fast. In Genesis chapter 16 from verse 1 to 4. Well, let's just, let's just look at it very quickly. Genesis 16, 1 to 4. That man, Abraham, God had spoken to him. Now it was taking too long. The result was not coming and the bible says in the 16th chapter now sarai abraham's wife bear him no children so this was an issue of barrenness versus the promise of god that he would be the father of all nations and she had a what please read and she had what and that handmaid was an egyptian whose name was Hagar. I want to show you the danger of impatience every time impatience begins to grow in your life you are about to wreck and jeopardize your destiny because very soon there will be something around you that can be an option are you getting what i'm saying many people have missed out on god's best for them because they could not wait two days to enter god's best we made all kinds of decisions in our lives Now Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord had restrained me. Are you seeing her interpretation? That God had restrained from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid, that it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham did what? Because Abraham had been eyeing the girl since. It's just that he didn't have the courage. How will he now tell his wife? Are you getting my point now? impatience will create pictures around your life if by august a godly brother does not come god is my witness i will go anywhere even if it's my village and carry anybody the bible says sarah told abraham i'm sure they have had quarrels and quarrels and sarah said okay this is a handmaid she's younger than me she can still be fruitful. Go ahead and sleep with her. And Abraham said, now you are talking. Abba, now you are talking. Let's, let's make this promise come to pass. Abraham did not argue. The young lady did not argue. Guess what? God too didn't say anything. The fact that you are doing things wrong and going ahead does not mean you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Did you see that the lady got pregnant? 
the fact that you compromise and it works does not mean it's God that made it work. There are many things that can happen in this life without God. Marriage can happen without God. You can make money without God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can get the job without God. Oh yes. You can get the admission without God. It's easy to compromise and get the blessing. But every time impatience leads you to take action, get ready because an Ishmael will be born. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Look at verse 11. 11 and 12. Let's see the tragedy of this union. The product of the inability to wait for the word of the Lord. To wait for the seasons. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, listen, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. Because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Verse 12. And he will be what? Was that what she planned for? Abraham. Was that the blessing you were told? He said this union will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. That means this troubler will be everywhere. Till today, the world has not recovered from the union. Less than one day of pleasure as a result of impatience jeopardize the generation. Who is about to jeopardize his destiny here? There's, there are people here that are about to make decisions as a product of impatience. someone getting blessed tonight the nation of Israel in Exodus chapter 32 when they came out of Egypt Moses went upon the mountain for 40 days look at me it was a waiting period is that true they didn't see any progress whereas Moses was on the mountain intercussing with God so something was happening that they could not see it did not mean nothing was happening brothers and sisters it looks like your life has been stagnant for years you think you are stagnant but if God should open your eyes to see the giants you have been conquering in the spirit God is really ministering to someone tonight it's not the way you have been looking at it it's not the way you have been looking at it physically you have not been in school for three years but there is a progression the lord has been doing something the job did not come five years after graduation you are still struggling and you believe you are like every other jobless person is that true there is an investment of the spirit in you only if you believe that waiting is not equal to delay in the kingdom the nation of israel could not wait and what did they tell Aaron let's look at that verse Exodus 32 very quickly is someone getting blessed impatience can jeopardize your destiny you can make mistakes that you may only be able to walk through but never ever be able to cut out of your life hallelujah and they told Aaron they said Moses is wasting our time we don't even know whether he's dead or not. Please, we brought gold out of the temple. We remember that while we were slaves, we saw the Egyptians worshipping a god of gold. And it was the god that brought them out. Oh yeah, Aaron, come and build us this idol. Let's celebrate this idol. We can't wait. If there is God in heaven, why will he keep us in the wilderness for, for this long? 40 days. We didn't see Moses. He didn't tell us anything and we are waiting. Let us build an idol. And while God was with Moses, advocating for the same people, they were destroying their own destiny by themselves. And Aaron said unto them, 
break off the golden earrings they force Aaron they force Aaron which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me verse 3 and all the people took the golden earrings they were so desperate to come out of that season they say is it not earring take oh yeah all the women remove your earrings Yes, we need to carve out very fast never find yourself trying to help God in a process that is exclusively within his power to pass you through and bring you to a place of greatness many of us try to help God Uzzah tried to hold the ark he died yet the ark never fell Let's look at just one verse there and then we'll continue. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it into a graving tool. After he made it into what? A molten calf. And they said, This be thy God, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land. So after two years, the child doesn't come. After praying and praying, Oh, we trust God. And then somebody comes to say, there's one man who, it's not like I'm suggesting that you should go there. Me, my heart is me. Praise God. The man can pray. It's not like a habali. It's not exactly, it's not a pastor. It's not a habali, but he used to help people. He said, really? Two years ago when they told you, he said, no, 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 I'm a child of God. Two years later, you are almost gassed out. And you say, eh, eh, let me talk with my husband about it. And you know, men, when you are talking, it looks like they will say no. And then you're talking and you say, where is the man? You say, have you seen him? Who has he, who has he given uh, a child to? Say, uh, let's be careful with all these people. Hallelujah. I counsel people. And I am amazed at how much people fall when it looks like the word of God dwindles over their life just a little. I'll never forget one lady who kept sending me text messages almost every day for one week. She said she believes that there are instructions I will give her for her marriage. I said, my dear, there's no instruction. I'm, I'm spending my life for hours shouting on Friday. Go and listen to relationship and family life series part one, two, three. The next day, they say she feels in her spirit that there is an instruction that will just open. You see, all these things is, is, is in innocence, but it's an act of impatience. Impatience will make you hear what God did not say. Impatience will create a road that was not of God. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Impatience will make you say yes to a guy that two weeks into the relationship, you say, please, was I dreaming? Who did I say yes to? Guy will say, sweetheart, you say, me. I said yes to you. Guy say, you said yes. Now, what is all this again? And ladies, please be warned. I don't know why, as I'm talking, I'm coming into all this relationship thing. Maybe God is speaking to some people through it. Hallelujah. Ladies, don't find yourself putting pressure on any lady and say, answer him now. You said, it's none of your business. If it's not you, they ask advice when you are invited. Otherwise, stay away and pray. Many of us just come and say, this guy is my personal person. I know him. I said you will be in the relationship. And many people jeopardize their destinies. Is he born again? He's a nice person. Does he love the word of God? He's okay. He doesn't smoke. He used to smoke and drink before God. Abba, in the last one year, even him, he told me. He doesn't lie to me, honestly. If he, you Abba, me, he loves me too much to lie. Until the day he pounds your face when Abel resurrects. And you find out that, that Cain, Cain, sorry, Cain is alive and active. And that guy beats the living daylight out of you. Or you enter his room and see another lady's clothes and the rest. And he says, so what, I'm a man. You said you are a Christian, you will not sleep with me. I can't, you are still my wife, but I have to find something to be doing before we get married. Impatience. Don't just laugh. I hope you are getting the message. It's a very serious message. 
impatience brought the world under under all kinds of terrible things. Someone getting blessed. Let's hurry up. During the waiting period, certain things usually happen. And I want you to take note of them. Number one is that you have the tendency to get weary. Especially when you have obeyed every principle you know. And there is no obvious change. Hallelujah. There are so many people that, that send me text messages and all of that. And they say, sir, I have been, I've been paying my tithe. God knows. I've been faithful. I've been paying my tithe. I've sown seeds. I've done everything. I'm, I'm a worker in my church. Maybe a member of the, the, the decoration or whatever. I'm a member in this and that. Why is it not working? I've done everything. I've listened to every koinonia message. God is my witness. And I've been walking according to the principles of the kingdom. So weariness can set in. Especially when you are truly obeying the principles. There are many of us who have truly been tithing. You've truly been giving. You've been submitting your prayer request. Miracle service after miracle service. Nothing seems to have happened. But listen. Number two. Your joy begins to fade. When weariness sets in, your joy, like I said earlier on, begins to fade. Number three, impatience sets in. I'm giving, you to it, I'm giving it to you now systematically so that you understand that these are the things that characterize seasons of waiting. The tendencies, the vulnerabilities. Number four, which is the most dangerous part, is that you begin to consider options and alternatives other than that which God has given you. Options. Options. Usually those options are devilish. Usually those options may even look spiritual. But that's not the blueprint of God for your life. When Jesus met Peter, look at me. When Jesus met Peter, I told him, come, follow me. I will make you a fish out of men. Is that true? But when Jesus died, just for three days, three days, Peter did not see Jesus for three days. His patience could not pass 72 hours. And in John 21, he said, Oh boy, I go a fishing. And the disciples said, We go with you. In other words, let's go back to a, an option that we know something about. And when Jesus saw him in chapter 15, thereabout, he said, Lovest thou me? more than this how many of us have given God options God told you you are going to be a great man of God but he said be patient you were not patient now you have started a fellowship that is almost killing you only you and your best friend who is tired he wants to leave it's just that he doesn't know what to do with you only two of you every evening only two of the person is tired because although you are genuinely called but you cannot wait for timings and seasons hallelujah i remember one one pastor gentleman years ago that guy is still struggling till today and if he doesn't adjust he may still be struggling till only god knows when i remember his fellowship years ago appointed him and they said he was supposed to be chief usher it was such an embarrassment to his personality and he said, God did not tell him in the blueprint of his ministerial call that he will be chief usher. If they cannot honor the grace of God upon his life and give him something honorable. By honorable, he means maybe president of the fellowship or something close to it. See that? Many of us have etched ourselves out of the preparations of the spirit. We'll come there. Because we have given ourselves options. Options. Hallelujah. God gave you signs. He gave you symbols. He gave you tokens that will signify to you when certain things are His will. You have not seen them. The equation has not lined up. 
if God tells you something, 80% is still not God. You must wait until it looks like God. It's amazing how impatience can make a thing look like it is God. Whereas it is not of God. And so somebody comes and says, will you like to be a pastor in our church? And they say, thank you, Jesus. I knew it. You people are underutilizing my anointing. Anytime God did not send you, be sure that you will not see his hand. See, let me tell you, this is one of the reasons why people move ahead of God and they keep struggling until the season comes where God catches up with them and they call it breakthrough. Then they make another mistake again and they wait. Why don't you walk with God? It's dangerous to walk ahead of God. Hallelujah. Impatience. Some of our parents have put our families in trouble because of impatience. I must build a house this year. I must build a house this year. Because my colleagues have built houses. Me too, I must build a house. I must buy three cars this year. One for me, one for my wife, and one for the children. And some of you are part of the sponsors of this impatience. Daddy, do it. You can make it. I believe in you. And now we put all our parents under all sorts of nonsense pressure. Because there is no impatience. There, there's no patience, sorry. Hallelujah. Some of us are here. If you want to wear tomorrow's clothes today, get set to walk naked tomorrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I must buy a suit of 100,000. You carry everything God has blessed you with now, home and abroad. You bought one suit and you will die for the remaining part of your life. Whereas that money came to buy books. Is someone getting blessed? And then the trouble is the jet age and technology has made matters worse. Hallelujah. We have 15 year old millionaires, 20 year old millionaires. So everybody just says, I, I must make it in this Nigeria. If there is a kick, I must cut my share or stab whoever is standing close to my share until that piece of my kick comes to me. And you know, there are all kinds of confessions and prayers in the church that encourage this lust. Kill every enemy that is covering your cake, your portion of the cake. And you know, we do all kinds of things in the name of prophetic activities. Events sponsored by hell to push us into impatience. Say, I receive grace to be patient. There are many of us here. Sister, your life would not be in the mess that it is if only you were patient. You said, all my colleagues are in relationships. And one guy just came, one of the lonely ones among the friends. Say, okay, I'm doing too. And look, from that day till now, it's been four or five years of hell on earth. Because you attach yourself to Hagar. And Ishmael is the product. Tonight, God is delivering someone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I will wait. Everyone say it, I will wait. I receive grace to wait. There is a difference between delay and process in the spirit. If you allow the devil to destroy your life. Listen, let me tell you. I, I shared with you a few stories last week. I remember when a few years ago, I would be invited to go and minister. Then there was no protocol, no nothing. And I will prepare fast and pray, right? And go and minister. And at the end of it, the people will not even say, Oh, there is an honorarium who want to appreciate you. And I mean, I will fast for days as if I'm preaching in an international conference somewhere. And then I will go and sometimes it's when I arrive that they'll push people in front. Praise God. And say there is a place. And I remember, I will never forget Two pastors, they came and met me. They said, man of God, the kind of anointing you have, there are some bishops that do not even have you. Why are you underutilizing this anointing? Many of us will hear that thing and say, it's true. It's true. I'll never forget 
through the rain, through the sun, through whatever. I will risk myself, pay my own transport and get there. I will never forget there was a gentleman from BLW. It was his suit I used to borrow when they invite me for ministration. I will borrow his suit in Suleiman and then Jantra had one nice loafers. His brother gave him. He will give me the loafers. The only thing I had was maybe salt or something. You are laughing. Don't be carried away by suits and all these things. Because many of see the trouble with men of God is they never open up the process that led them to that place. They make it look easy. As if it just happened by one prophetic word. And many of us are already running. You are already calculating your offering and your honorarium by Christmas. You better wake up. The journey is still far. In Jesus' name. It's not that I'm not prophesying that. I'm used to saying in Jesus' name, forgive me. Hallelujah. You must learn to wait. You must learn to wait. And I will show you why. We are going to wrap up when I reveal to you why this process is important in the kingdom. I will never forget one time when I got an honorarium of 10,000. I couldn't believe it. It was like I was dreaming. 10,000 for preaching something that is my passion that I will live and die for it. Brothers and sisters, a time came in my life when even me, I started talking to myself. I said, ah, but God, why are people doing this to me? People took me for granted. They would have lists of ministers that they are bringing for programs. But they'll find out that the cost implication for holding those graces is so much. And then they'll run to this scapegoat called Joshua Selman. Sometimes two days to the conference, they will invite me and I'll go to prayer. I'll say, Lord, and the Lord will say, go. It looked like I was a fool, but one day came. Due season. Due season. You do not qualify to enter your future if you cannot wait. Who is God speaking to tonight? God gave you a small business under 100,000. You've not been effective there. You're already dreaming. In the name of Jesus, in two months, I'll be riding a Jaguar. I'll be, you better stop dreaming and settle down and understand how things happen in the kingdom. Tame your lust and line it up with the seasons of the Spirit. There is a difference between speed and foolishness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people step into seasons that is not God. That, let's listen. If you force a door to open, whether it's God that opened it or not, it will open. But the trouble is, when they ask you who sent you, you will turn back and find out that you've been going alone. Hallelujah. So what do you do as you await your due season? This is the crux of this teaching tonight. What do you do when your due season is yet to appear? When that waiting period gets so long? Lord, will the child come? Will the breakthrough come? When will you change my story? Every time I go to pray, you show me a great destiny. You told me a day will come. I will minister before thousands. I will be an international evangelist. You are giving me an international apostolic or prophetic ministry. But as it is, I have not yet seen it. Number one, I'm giving you the formula. Brothers and sisters, if you keep this secret, you will survive the process. Between prophecy and manifestation, you will find out that while men are falling, by the wayside there will be a strength that will carry you number one during your waiting period you should do the following recognize that there is a divine timing and a due season it comforts you to know 
that your wait is not forever because God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8 won't turn there tells us that there is a time for everything under the sun the Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his what season of appearance everyone prophesy to yourself my season of appearance is coming prophesy my season of appearance is coming can you turn it into a prayer in one minute I may not look like it now but my God there is a making and my season of appearance will come I have a portion among the great and the hand of God will bring me there I will stay through I may not be able to preach now I may not have money in my pocket now but there is a due season it has been written by prophecy not the witches in my village can stop it no power in existence and I choose to wait I choose to wait there is a due season when I will drive the cars there is a due season when men will run after me with jobs there is a due season when so many men will come to ask my hand in marriage there is a due season when my own family will dedicate their own building oh yes time and chance happened to them all my turn is coming i know this for sure a day will come i will know what it feels like to be a kingdom millionaire a day will come that wedding ring will enter my hand too but meanwhile i wait a day will come i will travel abroad as though i'm walking from my house and going outside i will enter the plane a day will come i will wear the convocation gown a day will come i will finally pass the job there is a due season the child will come barrenness does not last forever prophesy in one minute shake away unbelief shake away impatience a day will come I will have peace with my husband I know it's a demonic challenge there are ancestral powers causing this family problem but there is a due season when the hand of God will visit my family I know but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded I am persuaded I may not see the wind I may not see the cloud it does not look like it will rain but the hand of Jehovah that hand that regulates times and seasons my turn will come I will be on television my turn will come the healing anointing will finally work my time will come when my profiting will appear it's called my season of appearing it's called my season of appearing hallelujah recognize that everything under the sun works by timings so when men are pushing you into seasons you are not ready for listen i cannot tell you god gave me an instruction and god told me he said that he would use koinonia messages like angels and messengers of fire and send them across the nations and god specifically said we should never not in this season of ministry begin to sell tapes and do all of that I cannot tell you how many people have called to say man of God you are robbing your ministry of millions of naira I said I appreciate your interest but there is a season are you hearing what I'm saying so many people have spoken to me 
Come and open Koinonia branch in Abuja. Come and open in Lagos. Come and do this. Come and do that. I told you in 2006, after our crusade in Joss, it was so powerful. The PFN said that we should come and open a branch of the ministry. They were willing to give pastors so that we would train and have an auditorium. I went to God and God said you would die. That was exactly what I told them. That God said I would die. Listen, many men of God today, do you know why ministry is killing them? Although God called them, they have opened other seasons for themselves. God never spoke to them to start a church. They started a church. Now they are wondering, no money, no nothing, no grace. There are many people, God told them you are an evangelist. They said I need a base so that I will have money. As though God cannot finance his work. Are you seeing how it has gotten a lot of people into trouble? Never do anything without asking God. Even if God said yes yesterday, ask him today again. Three days for us to start Koinonia, I went on a retreat. Three days I went on a retreat. And I said, Lord, it's not that I'm doubting you, but I want to confirm again. For adventure, it was my flesh that ministered to me. Hallelujah. When you see what the hand of God is upon, even if you are a critic, you will know that there is God in what is happening. Hallelujah. What season in your life have you opened prematurely as a result of impatience? I know you are anointed MOG who asked you to start a healing ministry. You started gathering sick people and telling all of them, write what is wrong with you and lift it up. You want to become a great man. Everybody you laid hands on, nobody was healed. The people are angry. They are planning to beat you by the next healing service. You better go back to God and ask questions. Hallelujah. Many people have produced albums prematurely. They produce five albums. Not even their immediate environment. No. They, they traveled abroad, took the albums, it didn't sell. Because the season. See, I taught you last week that favor is one of the clearest signs that God is with you. Hallelujah. Recognize that there is a due season. Sister, be delivered tonight. The husband will come. You are not the first to get married. Neither will you be the last. Brother, I know you are almost 30 years old. Relax. It's better to enter a profitable relationship at 30 than to enter nonsense that you sweat for 3 years before the arm of God will come to deliver you. Some of you see people in relationship and you admire them. Go and talk to them in truth and find out. Some of them, as they are going, they are just tired. It's just that they don't know what to do again with their lives. There is a child. They are already married. Say preparation. Many people want to drive cars. I must buy a car. I must buy a car. By force, the word of God is working. Nobody ever drove a car in my family. I must be the one and it must be this year. Calm down. Look, trust me, we prophesy all the time and my, my greatest joy is to see everyone blessed spiritually, financially, socially, and so on and so forth. But then, God will judge me if I tell you that after prophecy, it will just happen to you the next day. It's not every aspect of your life that will happen like that. There are seasons. Everybody says seasons. There is seed. There is time. There is harvest. Let's hurry up. Number two. Every time you are about to get weary because the waiting period to your breakthrough is so long and it looks like will God ever come? Will I ever get to Canaan? After crossing the Red Sea, 
while you are rejoicing thinking that's all you find out that there is another mighty battle waiting for you listen the second key is to meditate on the faithfulness of God meditate on the faithfulness of God so far count your blessings count your blessings it's amazing how we easily forget the things that God has done in our lives and we focus on the things that he has not done hallelujah oh lord this house is too small we are tired we need a change remember when you were managing with one room and that one room it was your friend that gave you although god has told you you are going to a new house but in the interim when impatience wants to set in when weariness wants to set in count the faithfulness of god where is the god that gave me a lion where is the god that gave me the bear oh god i'm i'm not eating hamburgers and all of this now but lord i'm no more soaking gary at least i can eat once in a day that i paid by myself in the dream i saw four points when the result came out i saw 3.1 but lord i give you praise because it used to be 1.7 and you have helped me you must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of god so far it's easy for satan to trivialize god's faithfulness in your life once in a while i have the opportunity to go to hospitals to see people and and then i i pray for people once in a while and i am humbled at the confidence of people in the midst of humanly speaking unchangeable situations hallelujah i have spoken to so many hiv patients in my life and you look at some of them and you humanly speaking you can say it's over you are counting days but you see the joy i remember speaking with one of the women very recently and this woman was rejoicing she said i now have a ministry and it was she did not even come for the counseling for healing she had so conquered it that for her to live is christ and to die is gain she was focusing on something else yet there is somebody shouting and arguing if the husband does not come in two months lord if i backslide let it be that it's your fault are you hearing what i'm saying there are people who have been diagnosed oh you need to go to the hospital brothers and sisters and see people whose legs they've cut they amputated the legs and then you keep seeing them singing his faithfulness is forevermore a pretty lady who is not married already but she had an accident and one eye is gone are you getting my point and she says lord i thank you i'm alive if i can do nothing i can give god praise whereas a house close to that same street where the accident occurred there is a complainer and a murmurer shouting at god we are tired of eating spaghetti in this house my father only pays school fees shame on him at his age he cannot even give me five thousand my father is giving me one thousand you wait and see the one that it was with box and prophecy they sent them from the village to come to zaria one heavy echo like and prophecy may god be with you and he came and stopped at north gates not having one naira yet they are in 300 level when you see people worshiping koinonia everyone knows the story we can wear suits and fake it but everyone knows where the shoe is hurting so don't let anybody stop your praise when it's time to worship god They gave birth to them in a nice maternity ward. They gave birth to you on the road. The faithfulness of God. You would have died within 24 hours. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Who is God speaking to tonight? You cried for years. Let the husband come. Now the husband has come. You are saying, Lord, 
I need a boy. I need a boy. I'm tired of three girls. On the other side, a woman is saying, Lord, anything, anything, boy or girl, whatever. I am grateful. Just one. I don't need two. I just need a consolation. What to do? This is one big secret of my life. You will never find me frowning and wondering what will my tomorrow be me? God has done too much in my life. I can begin to count on the faithfulness of God till my time of manifestation comes and it will not finish. Hallelujah. That's why by the grace of God, there is no reason for me to envy any man till I die. People challenge me, I am happy. But God has done too much in my life. I will be the most ungrateful person in my life if I ever try to trivialize what God has done. Sister, you are always complaining, but you forgot you are beautiful. There was there about beauty. Oh, may God change it for one day and you will know what is there about me. Are you kidding? Beauty took a woman from her village to become the king's wife. You never say, Lord, thank you. Every day somebody says, I'm fine. To an extent, when they say you're fine, say, please don't mock me. Hold on. See, let me tell you something. Ungratefulness is a terrible disease is seen before God refusing to acknowledge the things that he has done shine on me your grace your grace I'm nothing without you it's great your grace shine on me hallelujah you are there complaining oh god so i'm going to graduate with a pass you wouldn't have given me the admission really really you wait and find out students that were withdrawn in their second year or third year because they could not get a c not an e a c because of the nature of their program hallelujah and they left school and went, and went to learn hand work and they are still grateful to god hallelujah can we take two minutes to count our blessings go ahead and do it just in two minutes and we'll continue think of when you were nothing brothers and sisters Oh, I know what God has done in my life. No amount of honor will fool me. No amount of grace. Some of us were called this. God saved us. Some of us, when God saved you, you could not even speak English. You know it. Your family is still living in a hut right now. But God has exalted you. Tell him thank you. Your grace, your grace, we're nothing without you. Those of us who have been in this ministry for a while, remember when we used to sit on the floor? Remember when we used to sit on the floor? Who is God speaking to tonight? You are a graduate and you are still complaining. How many graduates? Does Nigeria produce in a year? I heard about a lady who had a ghastly motor accident today and died. How many of us have escaped accident? Armed robbers came to your house. They came to your neighbor's house. They came to your shop. Terrorists blew bombs in different places. Some of you saw it. You saw them. They pointed guns at you. But there was a hand of destiny that delivered you. When have you become ungrateful? Go ahead and pray. And say, Lord, although I have not seen what you will do yet, 
have not seen the manifestation but I thank you I thank you the God who did it for me before will do it again the God who gave me a husband will give me a child the God who gave me parents the God who gave me admission will pay my school fees for next session God who sustained my father without a job for 10 years that God is able God who sustained my mother without salary she trained me to school where is that God where is the God that delivered you when the doctors concluded about you when that breast lump grew up when 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 that when your hair was your hair was falling where is that god that helped you some of our parents were sacked and god gave them better jobs have you forgotten the faithfulness of this god your grace your grace i'm nothing without you Grace, your grace shines on me. Hallelujah. There are seven secrets the Lord gave me. And the Lord told me if I keep these secrets, nothing will stop me from becoming what He has destined for me. One day maybe I will share them. But one of it is this that I've shared with you tonight. If you know how to take advantage of your testimonies, you will never, never become a victim of impatience. Let's hurry up. Number three. What to do while you wait for your due season? Employ the weapon of praise. Hiya. Many people do not know that praise is a weapon. Employ when when you count your blessings, then you balance it up with praise. And see the devil that will stand to speak discouragement to you. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's hurry up. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's read from verse 17. And let's see what the prophet had to say. Habakkuk chapter 3. Brothers and sisters. This is what makes some people mighty and they walk upon the earth as if Satan does not exist. There are revelations that empower men. Although, everyone look up, the fig tree shall not blossom. But at least there is a fig tree. Is that true? Neither shall fruit be in the vines, but at least there is a vine. The labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Somebody say, yet I will rejoice. The Wayek result did not come out well. Yet I will rejoice. I will joy in the god of what the god that will bring that salvation i will rejoice although nothing may seem to work some of you as you go back right now to your homes the truth is that there's nothing to eat this night yet i will rejoice i remember times in my life i've told you when i will buy bread and cut the bread and put granite Huh? and close it and give thanks to the God of Israel because I knew that what was in me was greater than the rest of me greater than whatever can you sing the song he's played now Sam what does the song say let's even understand the meaning of the song so that we know we are singing 
What does he say? Email. That's what I'm saying. What's the meaning? Thank you. Yeah? Thank you. For what? You've done well. God bless you. Email. Just worship God in one minute. Email. Oh, Papa. Oh, And tell the God of your salvation, thank you. Psalms 138, very quickly. Psalms 138, verse 1. Powerful scripture. I'm giving you the arsenals to go back and bulldoze the gates of hell. And let the devil know that although you were almost gassing out, you came for koinonia tonight. And that the oil will never run dry. He said, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods all the gods that want me to be weary he said i will praise you before the gods i will sing praises that means i will look at all of these options and i will dance before god and say it's better for me to remain barren than to go to a herbalist to get a child the weapon of praise the weapon of praise let me hurry up because i want us to take at least five or ten minutes Two more points and we'll round up. We have to praise God this night. Number four. What do you do while you wait for your due season? Number four. Look up. Begin to act like the future you see coming. While you wait, if you truly believe that you are going to enter that future, begin to act. If you think you are going to get into the palace, then start learning the language of royalty. It's the sign of faith that you are preparing. You believe you are getting married. Start behaving like a married woman, not a small girl. Change. Switch. Have the mindset. Develop the ideologies that conform to the new level you are entering. Start acting like the person you believe you are going to be. Develop the mindset. You believe you are going to be a multi-billionaire CEO. Start behaving like that. Don't behave like an arm robber. Don't read any nonsense you see on the internet. Compose yourself. Start carrying the traits of leaders. You believe you are going to be an exceptional leader. Start training yourself. Don't speak anyhow. Great men don't speak anyhow. Start learning the protocol of greatness. There is a protocol that leads you into the realm of greatness. You believe you are going to be standing before presidents. Start behaving well. With your plate of gari, use fork and knife and lead. No problem. Make your mistakes. You are doing it in the secret place. A day will come you will do the real one. For sure. begin to act like your future when joseph joseph knew he had seen it in the spirit seen it in the dream that a day will come he will stand the sun representing his father the moon representing his mother and 11 stars will bow to him but then his life was opposite what his destiny was saying they threw him in the well and he composed himself he said i'm a leader I will learn the language of royalty. Listen, when they sold him for the equivalent of about $13 or so, that's the equivalent today. $13, you sell a human being. Were they so broke? 
that they sold their brother to go away. But Joseph said, no problem. There's one song we used to sing before. You can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. We used to sing and jump with it during missions. Then in FCS, that you can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. Should I teach you? One minute. One, two, sing. You can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. They can take your coat. They can lie against you. They can scandalize you. That's taking your coat. But it will not touch your destiny. They can say you will never make it. No problem. That's taking your coat. It doesn't just mean till a woman comes to lie that you rape her. Whatever men do to impede your progress, they are taking your coat. But they can take your coat. It cannot touch your destiny. See, this must be your contemplations in the secret place. The cost of your future is preparation. The cost, the price, the cost for your future is your preparation. While you prepare for your due season, keep getting qualified for that future. You will never enter a future that you are not qualified for. I shared this last week. God will never bring you into a future you are not prepared for. So he will hold back that time so that your preparation will coincide with the comings of times and seasons. The period of waiting is the process that qualifies you for your future. Write it down. The period of waiting is the process. The trainings that you receive during that period of waiting is what qualifies you for the future. So your waiting period is a period of preparation. Everybody say my waiting period is my period of preparation. Say one more time. If God gave you the 5 million naira last year, he would have killed you. So God says, hold on. Just keep being faithful with the 100,000. Oh God, boy, my colleagues have 1 million. Say, no, none of your problem. Just wait. And then you keep building yourself. God, I want the level of anointing that will move mountains and do all of that. God will say, just, just keep moving your chair in the place of prayer. Your chair is small enough for you to move. When you can move that chair, you will move something else till you move mountains. David did not become a king in one day. There was a progression. Although he was anointed for the palace, there were seasons. Be faithful at your current level. When Joseph went to Potiphar's house, he was so exceptional. He didn't have to wait until he got to Pharaoh. He was faithful, excellent. So much so that Potiphar made him the head of everything. He walked like royalty. He talked what to make the wife of Potiphar to be attracted. You know, slaves had a way that they dressed. Their beds were long. They didn't have time to shave and look nice. But Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph and she, she was strict. She said, come, I prefer this guy to my husband because he walked like royalty. Other slaves were moving this over. Wherever we die, Joseph said, I'm not dying in Egypt. I know that I've come to the place of royalty. Square up your shoulder and know that it only one of the most comforting scriptures for me in scripture in the Bible is, and it came to pass. Everybody say, and it came to pass. Powerful scripture. It never comes to stay. And it came to pass. You hear the Bible say it again. On the fifth day of this month and that and that and the word of the Lord came to pass. Hallelujah. How many of you are behaving like your future already? Don't raise your hand. Some of you are still behaving like your past. Because in the future, you will be too great to keep bitterness. 
but you are still keeping bitterness right from secondary school now you've met with the lady in university and you say even till we die you are still holding on to your past you are prolonging your arrival because you are not preparing yourself to be qualified hallelujah your preparation is your report card that qualifies you for the future your preparation is your report card you're diligent at this level number five oh that's a beautiful song we've not sang this song in a while you think i'll sing it let's continue i'm trying to rush Number five, what to do while you are waiting for your due season. Look for problems to solve. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. We discussed that last year. No man ever enters greatness. You find favor with God through the fear of the Lord, through faith and through title. You find favor with men. By solving problems. Joseph knew that he had the ability to solve problems. And he rejoiced. When he was in the prison. Potiphar's wife lied that he raped her. Said no problem. The truth will come out. Because you can see. Look at me. You become too cheap. When you spend your time explaining yourself to critics. Are you getting me? You become too cheap. You make yourself too cheap. There are many of us who learn this now. Learn this now. It is easier to become great than to remain great. Look at me. Come, my sister. Let this girl buy a chip now. That by next week, Koinonia, she comes with what chip now? Car people. Huh? Ah, that, that has expired now. Who is thinking of all these ones? Praise God. Jaguar. No, let me say something realistic. CRV. Right? Honda CRV. 2014. Limited edition. And she comes with it. Do you know at once, all of a sudden, you will find fault with her hair? You will find fault with what she's wearing. Is it this place they put watch or here? You know why? Listen. People's progress often it has a way of choking and revealing our current weakness. It is a natural thing. You must learn how to celebrate greatness when you see it. That's the antidote to jealousy and having the heart of a critic. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if this lady came from one village somewhere and all of a sudden she marries a millionaire and God just changes her life. There are people who say, eh, is this how to smile? She's not even behaving like a rich man's wife. Hold on. The truth is, it's not about her smile. Because if another millionaire comes to marry you too, you stop. You have now become colleagues in greatness. So no more criticism. Are you seeing that? I'm teaching you a principle. Every time people criticize you, understand their predicament. Don't be angry. Your success is doing something to them. Listen. Hold on. You were still doing the same thing before you got great. Why was it not an issue? That is today now, all of a sudden, eh, Shedrach wants to show us he's wearing shoe of 20,000. Who doesn't have it? If not because of my father, will I not be wearing it? No problem. Listen. Deliver yourself from the spirit of criticism by celebrating greatness when you see it. Oh, Shedrach, this is beautiful. You are looking smart. Wow, wonderful. You are coming. God bless you. You hardly criticize those you truly celebrate. Are you getting my point? Please, learn this. Every time you see God doing a good thing in someone's life, many of our parents are like that. You just saw one doctor or one professor in ABU. He just changed the fifth car. Say, 
keep chopping the money of the institution. It's all that. Get out of that attitude of cynicism and learn to celebrate. Because you are sowing seeds that will speak for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't spend your time trying to respond to critics. You say, hey, you have started bumming your hair. You want all the colonial guys to see you, no problem. Just continue doing what you are doing. And truly they will see you. And marry and leave the person criticizing you. Problems are gates, right? Problems are not walls. They are gates. Problems are doors. Begin to view problems as gates. It exits you from one season and brings you into another. The sun will no more give you sunlight by All the bruises inflicted by is your past now. You never learned this song for how many years? Those of us who are new are lost. The old people didn't used to sing, they'll just keep chewing their mouth. The moment you say, Heal all the wounds inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Problems are opportunities for significance. When God wants to announce you, He schedules problems for you to solve. Until you solve a problem, you are not known by anybody. You remain insignificant. Until there was Goliath, David was not known. Until the king had a dream, Joseph was not needed. Problems are opportunities for your significance. Problem solving guarantees your success. Please write. I'm showing you the things to do that will bring you into your due season. Problem solving guarantees your success. Write this down. Problem solving creates your distinction from others. Everybody will look at you the same way they are looking at everybody until an ability to solve problems distinguishes you. Sovereign Problem solving sets you apart. It distinguishes you. It makes your difference to be seen. Problem solving makes you known. You will remain in the wilderness until the problem you solve announces you. When you do this, you can rejoice knowing that a due season is coming. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. Brothers and sisters, as I look at us here, I see people who are bigger than Nigeria. I see people who are bigger than, than West Africa. There is an anointing within you. Some of you are sitting down here. Nobody, look, let me tell you. I have learned from experience that there are all kinds of gifted people scattered in this house. You may just sit down and watch people I remember when I was marking the exams of the, the, the first set of the, the students, the school of ministry. My goodness. Those guys were trained under quite some harsh conditions. They had like six months of strike and all of that. For a four-month program, they spent close to a year. When I was marking their exams, I was even afraid. I said, these guys did not do well. I was shocked. I tell you, some people wrote that exam as if it's magnet. And it's a kind of exam that you can even carry your, your, your notes and write it and you see from me. And I learned once again. Brothers and sisters, the person sitting close to your side, 
may be a genius that is bigger than this realm. It's only a matter of time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Forget about the board, what the board has told you. 1.1, 2.2, 3.3, hold on. You are bigger than that. But will you wait for your season of appearing? Or will you get so intimidated? There are many people who sit down and say, I'm bigger than this level. So I will move myself. That's the greatest danger. There are some of you that are doing jobs of 20,000. But the truth is that even if they pay you 1 million naira, they have insulted you based on what you have. Continue doing the 20,000 naira job. Qualify yourself for the greater seasons that are coming. Hallelujah. There are some of you when you sit in class with your colleagues. Academically speaking, you may not be the best students. But there is so much in you. Don't worry. Don't try to announce yourself. Relax. A day will come, God will speak and say, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved kingdom millionaire. This is my beloved apostle. This is my beloved prophet. This is my beloved pastor. And he will command the world to hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very, very important. We are going to do two things very quickly. In the next five minutes, please, I want everybody to participate in this. We are going to enter such a realm of prophetic worship. We are just going to thank God for the season that he has even brought us. Thank him for the things. Please worship him. Prepare yourselves. Thank him for the things that he has done. And thank him for what he's going to do. I don't know how you are going to worship God. And praise God tonight. And then after that, we will pray and prophesy. And receive grace from God. This message you are hearing... You will play it again and again in the future when you sit on the throne of greatness and you will cry because you will thank God. Rise up on your feet, everyone. this prayer session 
with a dangerous prophecy about your destiny. I don't know what the devil has spoken to you. I don't know what options you are about to take. But right now, lift your voice and begin to speak. And say, I'm not giving up. My God is alive. Go ahead. Pray. No way. No giving up. The prophet is still above my head. There's no giving up. I may fail, but I will rise again. There's no giving up. The hand of God is upon me. I'm an object of praise. Oh, protect it, there's no turning back. There's no turning back. My destiny is before me. There is a generation waiting for me. There's no turning back. I may cry, but there's no turning back. I may weep, but there's no turning back. There is an anointing upon me. There is a prophecy upon my life. Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. There is hope for a tree, even though it is cut off at the scent of water. Will fall again. Prophesy. There's hope for my family. There's hope for my marriage. There's hope for my academics. To him that is joined with the living, there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Go protect it. Cause the spirit of discouragement. Cause the spirit of impatience. Cause the spirit of discouragement. That business can arise again. That marriage can arise again. Your CGPA can arise again. Although you are in final year, it's not too late. Answer. Your eyes may be blocked out, your hair may be cut off, but there is a new season. David, remain in the wilderness. The day of your announcing is coming. Come on, pray. Pray, Koinonia. Make investment for your destiny. I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up. No compromise. Hallelujah. Two prayer points and we'll round up. The next prayer point is that you're going to cry for grace. The Bible says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, if because of the fierceness of the season of waiting, you now say, I will marry any man. I will take any job. Okay, I will go to the harbor list. I will ask God for forgiveness later on. I will sleep with the boss. Let me just get the work. i like you to shout, no way. Shout it, no way. Listen, the three Hebrew boys said, Oh king, we are not careful to speak to you in this matter. Our God, whom we serve, will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, we are going to pray. i like you to say, Oh God, tonight, give me the finisher's anointing. Give me the finisher's anointing. One more time, I will push. Come on, open your mouth and pray. The finisher's anointing. The anointing.
The finisher's anointing. Koinonia, pray. You are almost there. Don't give up. When your season is about unveiling, don't give up. You paid the price for 10 years, for 5 years. You paid the price. You paid the price. Lord, give me the finisher's anointing. Like Samson, I will finish. Like Samson, I receive the finisher's anointing. Then they keep beside me, but I won't give up. Oh, God, 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 come on, heart of faith. I receive the finisher's anointing. They may call me Mother Teresa, but I will keep walking in holiness and diligence. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. Till my change comes. I and chance happens to them. Wait. Wait. They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They shall come up with wings and eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh my soul, wait thou upon the Lord. Oh my soul, wait thou upon the God of your salvation. Though thy beginning be small. But your latter end shall be great. Though thy beginning be small. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord, when they are strength, when they are almost casting out, suddenly. When the devil is celebrating the finishing of the oil, a prophetic word brings it back again. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. I like us to prophesy and say, Lord, I will become what you have shown me. Nothing will stop me. I'm on my way coming, prophesy. Go put Tokata. I will become that prophet that you have told me. I will become that great man. That great woman. I prophesy. I send a prophecy to my destiny. He and I, you will enter your realm of greatness. Koinonia, you will only rise from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from prosperity to prosperity. One level of the anointing of Prophesy, I call my family blessed. I call my loved ones blessed. I call my destiny blessed. The hand of the Uberbell that has started this work. The hand of the Rubabel that started this ministry, the hand of the Rubabel will complete it at the shout of praise, the shout of praise, the shout of praise. It is not by power, it is not by might. There is an ability of the spirit. There is an ability of the spirit. It is the finish of the Lord. I will enter the time of greatness. Men that celebrate me, they are not even speaking. Commanding favor, doors are opening for me. Change has come to my life. Things to the brightness of my life. My gates are continually open to receive the forces of the gentleman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like adding just one more prayer point. We are going to pray specifically for the finances of our lives and our loved ones. Are you ready to pray? Two prayer points. On that are just at once. Cause the powers. Are you getting me? I told you there are some delays that are not godly. There are some waitings that are delays. I like you to cause the powers 
and release increase. How many people are ready to pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I stand as an ambassador of the kingdom and I plead the blood of Jesus over everything that speaks against the prosperity of my life and my family. Lift up your head, O ye gate, and be ye lifted, O ye ancient door. Lift your voice and speak. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of your hands everyone lift your hands I prophesy over your life everything that has made you unthankful everything that has made you impatient that you are about to fall out in this season and compromise I cause that power now in the name of Jesus Christ every other voice you've been listening to that is not the voice of his majesty tonight we silence that voice in the name of jesus every wrong relationship wrong association wrong business wrong ties in the name of jesus christ that is giving satan access to destroy you be delivered from it now be delivered from it now. Be delivered from it now. I pray for you. Where your strength is almost failing. Tonight, receive a supply of strength. A supply that will last you until you arrive. In the mighty name of Jesus. That when men say there is a casting down. For you, you will say there is a lifting up. And I speak over everything in your life that is dead. That the devil has told you there is no hope. In the name that is above all names, I command those dry bones, come alive now. Come alive now. That dying CGPA, come alive now. That dying family come alive now. That dying marriage come alive now. For your expectations shall not be cut short in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. There are people here tonight who are saying, man of God, I need to make my ways right with the Lord. I love him, but I've not made a commitment to walk with him. And there are yet others who are saying, I've given my life to Christ before. But for whatever reason, I found myself walking in ways that are not of God. And I need to retrace my step right now. We are out of time. In just one minute, if you belong to any of these categories, I'd like you to leave your seats. Don't be ashamed and come out here right now. I want to pray for you. Go ahead. You are hearing the voice of the Lord. Don't remain on your seat inside and outside, wherever you are. Don't wait for anybody to come out. You are the first person. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord is speaking to people. When you hear his voice, do not sit back. Do not sit back. God bless you. God bless you. This is where it all starts. God bless you. Keep coming. We have just one minute for this. God bless you. Make sure you don't sit back. This is about your life. This is about your destiny. God bless you. Keep coming. Thank you so much, those of you who are here. This is the greatest decision you would ever make. In one minute, I'd like you to lift your right hand. Come and join them. God bless you. I know they are still coming. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you and I love you with all my heart. I make up my mind to live for you from today and for the rest of my life. Join them, my brother. I denounce sin and Satan and I receive the gift of eternal life into my spirit. I declare in the name of Jesus that I'm a child of God. I'm saved. The life of God is in me. In the name of Jesus. I release every one of you from whatever has held you. I don't care what mistakes you have made. I don't care where you have missed it. Tonight in the name of Jesus you are released. I cause that power that holds you down. And I release you in the mighty name of Jesus to experience the way. The very life of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare you saved. I declare you free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for making this glorious decision. Bless you. Please I'd like you to follow the usher waving his hands. They'll have your information and you'll be back. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. If this is your first time tonight worshipping with us here at Koinonia, we love you and we have a blessing and a prophecy for you. Please leave your seat and just run out here very quickly. If you brought anybody, now is the time to push them forward. You love them too much to allow them without this prophecy. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Very quickly, we're out of time. Thank you. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.